There we are. All right. There we are. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, it is. Isn't it, isn't it best? That isn't it great just to say it's non-COVID twenty. Well, it's non-COVID twenty twenty, but now we still got to worry about twenty twenty one. Yeah, that don't don't jinx it, man. I'm gonna put you up like that damn um friggin' what is it the Dr Pepper commercial? Yeah, I'm gonna get you for jinxing, you know. But it, it is good, and I want to say welcome to everybody out there. I am Captain Jack Rackham. I'm joined by my faithful co-host Buffalo Fred Kilmartin, who's changed his name to Goebbels. Not to be confused with the old, uh, well, I won't even go with the Nazi joke there, but, you know, what, <laughs> but uh, good to see you there, Fred. So uh, you've been having a good week. You are saying it's a new, good New Year. What would you do for the uh, the New Year's holiday, by the way? I didn't really do much. I mean, you really couldn't go out anywhere. You know, bars in our area are closed at 10 o'clock. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, the New Year starts at midnight. So we pretty much stayed home and had a couple cocktails and just enjoyed myself. <laughs> well, good. Good. Okay. And I'm trying to get the way to keep me out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say it now. It is now granted New York is not, at least in your area, New York, it's not as confined as other states are, correct? Oh, I'm in upstate New York. So I'm uh, between uh, Albany and Syracuse. Right. And it's, it's, it's definitely a lot nicer than, I mean, I know that there, we had people that were going to Miami for New Year's, they were from California. Yeah, and they were saying how you know they wanted to get out of the state. First off, you know I wouldn't wish ill on anybody, but you know what? If you want to walk into a situation where you want to pick up a sickness, how stupid can you be? Okay, yeah. but that's just me. That's just me. And again, uh, I want to welcome all of our participants out there. By the way, this is the live broadcast, and, and uh, when I put this on at a later time. If you want to watch us live, be sure to hit us up on Facebook. But if you're not watching live, this will be on my YouTube channel to go to Captain Jack Rackham Levy. It'll be on the YouTube channel. So hope to see you there. Fred, we got lots to talk about, and you got the list of things to talk about. So I'm going to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, a lot of it. I mean, you, you think about everything that's going on in the world now uh, with COVID case, case, cases starting to spike in the country, well, now they're starting to spike in the NFL. Uh, as we were getting ready to set up, uh, we got noticed that uh, I was getting an update coming in. Browns closed their facility again for the third day in, in, uh, out of four days. Uh, they have a couple people in there that on their staff that tested positive. Right now, their wide receiver coach, uh, Chad O'Shea, he will not be coaching this weekend. Offensive line coach Bill Callahan, he will not be coaching this weekend. And the same with assistant offensive line coach Scott Peters. They have a couple players that are in COVID uh, re, uh, right now, and they're not going to be playing. But as of right now, the NFL still has uh, the facility. Uh, First Energy Stadium is still on the schedule, so the game is still going to be played there uh, per the NFL. They have not changed anything at all with that. So that's good news. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know you, you, you know you said a swear word in, in that monologue as well. You understand Fair that, hand. right? You said Bill Callahan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. So as long, as long as you knew the vibe was coming, you know, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh, so that's where the uh, is is at now. <laughs> that's where you got to get that beep, beep. <laughs> yeah. If I had a seven second delay uh, or anything, I'm just, I'm going to hold myself to that as well. So, oh. you know, it's not just the Cleveland Browns. I mean, even our beloved Buffalo Bills, uh, Tyler Croft, he had tested positive, so due to tracing and stuff. So he's on the uh, COVID reserve. He will not be playing this weekend. And and this is going to – I got a couple other teams that we're going to mention too. So what this does for Tyler Croft, and, and I'll bring up a couple of the other cases, are based on what the NFL has you do for the COVID protocols that you have to be sitting out for 10 days. So now Tyler Croft, will not be eligible for the wild cards next week. He will not be eligible to play in the wild card game next week because he's in the protocol now for COVID. Uh, so there's one tight end for the Bills. Now you look around, it's not so bad, the the, the Buffalo Bills having one tight end because um, the New, York, New Orleans Saints are going to be without all of their running backs. Uh, Alvin Kamara, he, he's gone. Uh, they the, all Anybody in that, that room is gone. They're, they're trying to bring up some, some right now. But Alvin Kamara is a big one. 
uh, and then they're they're just decimated at running back. So they're probably going to have to throw the ball probably about 70 times this weekend, and uh, they're still trying to fight to get that number one. So uh, it's going to be tough sledding for them guys not having Alvin Kamara. The guy put up six touchdowns last week, and now he's on Kobe Reserve. So, again, what's, you know, the Saints really want to get that by because now you look at Alvin Kamara, and, again, with the NFL protocol, he's not going to be eligible to play in the wild card next week or division or, you know, wild card. I'm sorry. That's what next week is for the playoffs. So the Saints, in a sense, really got to try to get that number one. Uh, so they – I don't even know if they're eligible for the number one because – the- yeah. Yeah, they are. If if Green Bay loses and, and they the win, win, then they are the number one seed, if I'm not mistaken. So they're going to have to fight hard. Now they don't have Michael Thomas. Now they don't have Alvin Kamara. I mean, this is really definitely going to uh, uh, really affect this team. And like I said, the NFL, they, you know, they're, they're not going to stop these games. They're trying to get this season in. So now they got to go and, and try to find as, as many as they can. Other teams that are affected by it was the Cardinals just put Christian Kirk. He's on the uh, COVID reserve uh, protocol right now as well. And we already know Miami Dolphins yesterday. The big one was Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, you know, Magic Fitzpatrick. That's another swear yeah. word. I didn't want to say it, but that was a that was a big one because here's the thing now. Two A is going to have to play the full game. Flores can't go ahead and pull him and try to put Fitz in there because – and now if the Miami Dolphins – should happen to get into playoffs again. Ryan Fitzpatrick will not be available because of the NFL protocol that 10 day. So he's another one that will not be able to play in the wild card. And, and then you got a couple other ones that are affected by it. Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, cornerback Joe Hayden. I know he had a concussion a couple weeks ago, he was in the concussion protocol. Now he is actually in the COVID again, NFL protocol. So he's on reserve. So he's another piece that will not be available for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wild card games. And then you got to look across. You got Eric Ebron, the tight end. Uh, he's another one that's not going to be able to play now. And that was a big target all year for Ben Roethlisberger. So that's going to be a big miss for him. And, uh, again, this is COVID. And, and it's not even that. Um, I, I even got a report that CBS um, – Analyst Tony Romo, because of the COVID protocol, will not be doing the Rams and I'm sorry, who are they playing? Rams and Cardinals game this weekend. Boomer Esiason uh, will be taking his place again because of COVID. It's okay. crazy. Now I'm going to ask you because I, I think this is one of the things that you we we were going to discuss, and if not, I apologize for throwing it out there on the spot. Yeah. Um, are there plans? Because I know I was listening, or, or there was a, a tweet from JT the Brick, and he was saying that they would that the NFL has about a week to figure out if they want to go to a bubble a bubble environment for the playoffs. Is that still in the up in the air? Well, now here's the thing with the NFL; they're not mandating it, but a lot of the teams right now are wanting to put their teams in the bubble just for the playoffs. But remember, the NFL is not mand- mandating that the teams do that. So they had talked about it. But now I think the teams themselves want to do this and try to protect them their teams because, you know, once you start in the playoffs, it's a whole different new season. So they're going to try to protect their players as best they can. And, and if this is what it takes, then, I mean, I'm all for it. I mean, it's just for a couple of weeks, but the reward at the end is well worth it if you have your full squad there. Okay, but there's no plans to go to, like, neutral sites and put everybody at the same neutral site, kind of like what the NBA did. No, no, they had talked about it, but that is not in works. But like I said, maybe the NFL will mandate it, but right now it's not. But some teams are looking into doing this themselves. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, like you said, the, the the NHL did it for like two two or three months. The NBA did it. Mm-hmm. If your prize is to be a person that has their hands on the Lombardi Trophy – and you really are that much uh, a stalwart to get that prize at the end, you do it. I'm sorry yeah. you say, you know, you, you absolutely you tell your yeah. family, I'm sorry, this is what I do. And that's what you do in order to get it. And, you know, it, I know it won't be easy uh, for the NFL be, as, as it was easy for the NHL and for the NBA because you're with the NFL, you're dealing with larger number of people involved uh, throughout the whole organization that helps day-to-day operations and game day operations. So you're dealing with a large number of people that you would have to put in that bubble, but I'm all for it. I I think we should. I I know that it's going to keep the players away from their family, but like I said, uh, keeping your family healthy 
and keeping others around you healthy. And the reward at the end is huge. If you can get your full squad to the end, that's what it's about. Got it. And uh, how, how many more stories we got? I do have a couple of stories to touch on as far as some the coaching carousels that we know that have been going around. Uh, one, it's not a surprise. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to – if I shock anybody – Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me get ready with my with my Home Alone surprise face. Get, come on. Get, I'm going to get ready for it. The New, New York Jets, the New York Jets are letting Adam Gase go after tomorrow's game. <laughs> yeah, I know this. I don't even know how I can say that it's breaking news, but it's – <laughs> it's not breaking news. But What's breaking news is that they waited until the end of the effing season to do it. Well, and not only that, but you you got your defensive coordinator fired for this guy who probably was the lone bright spot on that team. But the fact is that, again, uh, it, it's just another example of you can be an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, and have an amazing season. It's just being a head coach is so much more involved. And Adam Gase has, has obviously shown – that he's failed at that. I mean, hey, I don't want to wish failure on anybody. Maybe he'll find another offensive coordinating job and maybe excel in that. That's his skill. You know, that's his skill set is being the OC, not having all that other burden to go with the, being a head coach. So, Well, you know you know where Adam Gase is going to go next, right? Probably New England. <laughs> well, I, well you, you were thinking along the same lines I am. He's already hit the Jets. He's already hit the Miami. He ain't coming to Buffalo. <laughs> no, he's coming to Buffalo, baby. He's got to hit the entire AFC least. No, we well, get we're, ready we're, for him, Buffalo. He's we got Brian Babel, who's actually everyone's starting to uh, embrace him as being part of Buffalo three years now, and he's did a heck of a job this year. But that's another story in itself. Another coach I wanted to touch on is the Doug Marone situation up in uh, Jacksonville, down in Jacksonville. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. uh, they, they don't know. They're not firm. They don't have a set decision yet. I know that uh, Urban Myers, was his name was brought up and, and possibly coming up there to replace Doug Marone. But um, I, I, it's kind of odd for me because I'm a Syracuse guy. He did a great job there, but I wasn't happy with what he did to the Bills. So I, I'm not going to feel bad for the guy. I mean. It is what it is. So Jags might be looking for a new coach. Oh, yeah. Jags are going to look for a new coach. And see, that's, that's where a coach should go because you get the first pick in the draft. Yes. Okay. Whether you get Lawrence or whatever the hell, the bounty that, of picks that you're going to get for the number one pick, you got a, a, a warm weather environment. But don't plan on being in Jacksonville for a long time because, remember, uh, Khan – is is definitely somebody that is shopping that team around. Oh and yeah, he probably wanted to move it to uh, to England, but I, I just still can't see the logistics of putting a team in in England. But you know that's what he really wanted to do. Yeah, but now with COVID, that's not going to happen anytime yeah. soon. Yeah. We ain't going over to the pond for a while. <laughs> for a while. Well, yeah, definitely, it's got got to be post pandemic for sure. Okay. Uh, you're up. You're you're the you're the Walter Cronkite of the show, man. I, I'm the uh, I'm the guy that gets to talk about all the things you talk about. What's next? Well, I mean, now I mean we we touched on all the stories around the NFL, and I mean, like I said, the biggest thing right now is this COVID. Uh, the NFL's dealing with it. I mean, they've been dealing with it all year. They really want to get this season in. So, I mean, you got to give them credit. I mean, they really are trying to get this in. I mean, these guys got to be responsible. I mean, just watch out who you're hanging out with. You know, that's that's all I can say, and just be safe. Okay, well, one thing that we didn't do, and we didn't hit our sponsor, so I'm going to make sure that we go back to that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and then we, had, we, we had one other story that we wanted to touch on, but what? we'll go through the sponsors right now. Okay, I don't know why that happened, of course, because I, I, I said I didn't want it to happen, so it happened. So we're, we're ready for it. But, yes. but not right now. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the uh, the sponsors. Let's let's do that first. So, so made, go ahead, Fred. So made football style socks. These guys do an amazing job. Any NFL team, whether you're a fan of, fan of the Bills or the Raiders or the Cowboys, Washington or Eagles, these guys make your socks. They're nice socks, custom made socks. They're beautiful. So made performance socks. Those Tosco toys, this is where you can make yourself into a figurine and have yourself, whether you're a super fan or you know someone that's a super fan, and now they'll have their own figurine, nice to have on the display case, or even with their, their sports memorabilia collection that they had. be a nice piece to go along with it. 
And all that information, you can find out the information about our sponsors. You can go to the uh, and um, the Elite Super Fan page or the group. Tiffany always has uh, always has the links up in there. And uh, if you're not already doing it, be sure to follow, like the show, follow the page, and follow it, Tiffany. And they do over there at Elite Super Fans. And again, that that's just uh, showing some of the uh, the Tosco toys. I had that queued up. I'm sorry, it's not this full screen like I wanted it to be, but you know, such is life. You can at least see some of the Tosco toys, and then uh, which one is available quick? Okay, here's another one. Okay, let me get it right up to the camera. Here, here's here's a full life uh, Tosco toy. It makes me look a hell of a lot better, folks. Makes you look bigger. Yeah, you know, I, I, I wish I was this buff. He looks pretty buff. I, 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 you know, I used to be like that. I used to be like that, but that was that was in the olden days. Let me let me put this guy back down here. Okay, and uh, we'll go to next sponsor here. There we go. Seasonal sports are the ones that are doing the anti-bullying shirts, the T-shirts. You can go on the uh, Elite Superfan page. They have a shop button. You can buy a sweat, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, hat. But the T-shirts are there. Uh, Fred and his wife, they're the ones that created them. And uh, you can go ahead and help out the, the anti-bullying cause. And uh, family-owned and operated, you need any embroidery, any screen printing, give them a call. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a few. Uh, Retired Players Congress, uh, my buddy uh, Bob Grant is the president here. And uh, tell you what, support the players of old. And I love this shirt. It's uh, – I don't want to get it back up to the camera. I can't see. Is that a good shot? Because I can't see. Go to see your it. left. Go to your right. Your right. Right and up. Your other left. They're up. They're perfect. Okay. When football was football, these shirts are available – at uh, playerscongress.com, playerscongress.com, all the money that you spend on these shirts, they go, they go to the players of old that were that were making a pittance in comparison to the people today. So, and they got a lot of styles. It's not just uh, NFL, but there's MLB and other things available. NBA, uh, they got contracts with. Go get your stuff from them. Don't go to Fanatics. Don't go to other places. Go to playerscongress.com first. See if there's things that you like. Grab it from them and help out some of the players of old. And then another one that's a good friend of mine, Jerry Robinson. Uh, Jerry Robinson, former Eagle. I, I see if I get uh, some uh, some people in the backstage to uh, to listen. I'm I'm looking at responses. I, I got Summers. I got a smirk from one guy, and he knows who he is, Jamie. Okay. I got I got a Jerry Robinson and former Raider uh, is the uh, president of board of directors for ShoesForKids.com. Great organization. They make sure that kids have shoes nowadays. And you know you want to do that. You want to help them out, give them support. Or and I would like to say if you got some shoes lightly soiled, not things that have like five holes in them, and, and you can you know that the kids in Cambodia wouldn't even wear. Get some really nice shoes that you want to donate to shoesforkids.com. And then here's my other one, the Bocadillo universe. And I'm going to go back as well. You can see what a Bocadillo looks like. Again, they, a Bocadillo makes you look pretty nice. Because that's, <laughs> my, that's my Bocadillo right there. I don't look like such a nasty guy. You know, I kind of look uh, cute. So it, between uh, Tosco and Bocadilla, you can you can look a lot better in life. So make sure you go to Bocadilla. And there was one other one, Fred, and I didn't get a graphic for it yet. It's the gentleman that does the artistry. Ken Newton Studios. Yeah, he's an artist out of Buffalo. He does an amazing job. He does a lot of the football players' uh, portraits. He's at a lot of the events up there. He actually did a lot of the my cleats for my cause for the cleats up there. He made a lot of their – and now he's doing custom footballs. Like you can get any football with your team logo, your team backstories, all that custom painted on a football. He does a great job. He's got a page. It's Ken Newton Studios. Uh, and he's out of Buffalo, but it does any teams. He's he's a great guy. I've known him personally as well. Okay, and we're going to get into the – thank you, by the way, Fred, for, for doing he's, – he, he's got it all right here, folks. He's not reading off of cue cards or nothing. He knows <laughs> that stuff. He's got it down. Okay, as you know, we talk about what went on in round the league, and we already did that, but with the biggest part of our show is we get a chance to talk to super fans that are playing in the Sunday night game. 
And this is this is one of the best things we got going on is we get to get some really great guys and gals in here. So without further ado, and they're probably saying, Jay, shut up so we can get on camera. <laughs> I, 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 know say, I know they're saying that. They're saying, they say, hey, old man, shut up already. Well, we're getting infested by birds. Yeah, we, we now it's it's a three it's the three out one battle, and I'm sure the Redskins are going to win this one. Not worried about it at all. Literally, okay. <laughs> well, we we normally we normally have two and two, but uh, we we wanted to make sure we had a a, a, a great show. Sorry. Okay, is that okay? Everybody does have their mics on, so that's good. I'm going to introduce you to all these guys now, uh, Mr. Jamie. You're going last because I I know you, and you'll you'll, you'll take the you'll just take the floor. For I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Pork Ryan, who's representing dutifully the Washington Football Team, otherwise known as the WTFs. Or did I get that right? WTFs. That's right. WFT. WFT. Washington Football Team. Okay, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. It's the Washington football team. Yeah, okay. The Washington football team. I, I like the WTFs better. Uh, yeah. And and for 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 myself again, pork ride. Please introduce yourself so that everybody knows who you are and how you are and all that mm -hmm. good things. All right. So my name is Jeff Reinhardt. I represent uh, the Hog Farmers. Uh, we are a group of super fans that. Started about three years ago, um, and we are trying to carry on the legacy of the Hoggets. For anybody that's familiar with the Hoggets, um, they raised over $130 million uh, in various charities. And we actually started our own charity three years ago called the Hog Farmer Foundation. Um, and we, our mission is to yeah. elevate oh, the yeah. social and emotional well yeah. of children and their families going through that are affected by pediatric cancer. Okay. And folks, I'm going to introduce, uh, I'm going to mute the mics to make sure we don't get any crosstalk because it's hard enough to hear us as we are. But again, uh, I'll, I'll unmute you as we come on. But again, uh, Pork Ryan, I appreciate that. I got a question right off the bat. I don't mind. I, I hope you don't mind answering. What's your opinion of the, on the name change uh, so far? I know. I know it's a touchy subject. Yeah. So don't go. Don't go out on a limb if it's going to get you in trouble. No. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm not. I wasn't happy with it. Obviously, in the beginning, um, I'm still not. You know, I'm. I'm on board, um, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, you know, my father was a diehard Redskin fan. The reason why I became a, a diehard Redskin fan. And, you know, I lost my dad back in 98. And not going to lie, when we ended up changing our name, I felt like I lost him again. As, as, as crazy as that might sound, and, and, you know, but to me, you know, that was like the last straw that I had with my dad. So, um you know, it definitely affected me for a while. And first couple of months, I was pretty angry about it. Um, but then, you know, you just got to move on and embrace it. And unfortunately, that's all we can do. So I, I embrace it. Uh, I support the team and the players 100%. Um, so that's pretty much what it is. Okay. So, and again, yeah. Christian Hill says he appreciates your honor. We all do. And, and again, I didn't, I, I didn't mean to throw you a curveball. No. You're but, good. Uh, you know, I that I've been known to do that. So again, and, and to say, hey Jay, you know, shut up and throw, you know, and, and throw some people curve. But that's me, man. I'm being honest to it. Thanks again, there, uh, uh, pork Ryan. I know it's Jeff, but thank you, Jeff, for being real. Now I'm going to go to the other side of the house, and and we do have a uh, like I said, we had Birdman come in pre pre game, uh, and he he kind of uh, he, he's ready to go. But I am gonna, I'm going to throw it to the first, to the other guy who has no clue what's going on because that normally makes for better TV, okay? Because he's like, I, I have no clue. I'm backstage. I'm listening to a bunch of people talk, and I don't know what the format is. You're hey, you're going to get a big spoonful of it from Captain Jack, their evil demon. Tell me about you. And, and and what it became to be. How did you become Eagle Demon and who you are and all that good stuff? 
Well, well, it's nice to be here. I appreciate uh, everybody inviting me. Appreciate uh, Jamie looking to the bench and uh, getting the backup in for this role. Uh, you know, we've we've had a lot of injury in Philadelphia this year, so I'm 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 coming in in the backup role here. Um, but I I I've been a fan all my life. Um, you know, it, it started at a young age. My my dad was. Uh, incorporated into it, he was a he was a vendor at um, Franklin Field, um, so it, it's got a lot of history with me and my father. Um, he passed in 08, um, so he got to see the 1960 championship. I got to see the 2017 Super Bowl, um, so that's kind of a special thing. Um, but the, the the demon role kind of took its shape in 2015. Um, I used to dress up as different characters throughout the throughout the year, um, but one of my favorite wrestlers uh, kind of reached out to me, um, and it, and it just made me realize that those guys, just like the NFL players, are just normal people. And the way he touched me, I told him, you know, I'm gonna run with your character forever. Um, so it kind of became this. NFC East rival. I would bring out the demon during the Giants games, the Dallas games, um, the Washington games. And during the 2017 season was the year my uh, a lot of my close friends, I started getting the text, hey, hey, we need the demon. We got the Vikings. We got, you know, we got we got uh, the Steelers coming up. So we need the Vikings. So uh, I, I, after a while, the demon just started coming out more and more and more. And now it's uh, uh, an every week thing, which I love, whether I'm home or away or, or you know, at the link. Um, it's a fun thing. The kids love it, love meeting people. I mean, without it, I would have never met Jamie. Um, I probably would have met Jamie because he's met every person from Philadelphia. Um, but we probably wouldn't have become so close. So. Um, it's opened a lot of opportunities aside from uh, what I thought it would. So uh, just like this. So it's amazing. All right. Well, thanks again, your partner. Again, I know about Franklin Field. I know about I even I know about even uh, JFK Stadium because that was uh, I, uh, JFK was right down the when I was a young kid. Right, I live right down the street from the vet and the spectrum. So I I know all about that. In fact, Franklin Field, wasn't that where they did the scenes for uh, the Bruce Willis film? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, I was, actually, I was just watching that with uh, my wife for the first time, Unbreakable, because we had seen Glass. So when we watched that, um, I, I was telling her about those scenes. Pretty cool. Well, again, the, the all-knowledgeable <laughs> Captain Jack. So again, I, I, I'm, I'm, sh I'm showing some of my causes. Now, uh, the, our next guest is the Birdman. I'm going to unmute him here. So, Mr. Birdman, and Mr. Birdman brings us a special guest. So first off, thank you for both being here. We appreciate you all being dressed up. I, I love everything. By the way, it, yes. it's, not, it's not a, uh, what do you call it? It's not a costume. No, 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 no. It's a getup. It's your garb. It's your uniform. That's what I tell people. I don't wear a costume. When I'm Captain Jack wearing my stuff. I'm wearing my garb. And I want to say thank you to the bird man and to the young young lady next to you. Tell us all about yourself. Tell you what. She's the next generation of Birdman. <laughs> Her name's Chicken. Okay. Say something. Um, go eat. <laughs> <laughs> Camera. <laughs> she gets vocal. You both screaming out the door. Yeah, I know. If, if, she, if she's from Philly, you got you got to treat her. You got to treat her. That you got to be able to elevate. Bring that voice up. I never know any Eagle fan. And I said it correctly, by the way, Eagle fan that is racist oh. and vociferous. Out there, so uh, the chickadees gotta be able to. You're, you're as well. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Yeah, you're breaking up. Okay, a I'm sorry. Um, I I can turn it up. I I'll turn it up on to eleven. How's that? There you go. Oh yeah, she spreads it. Okay, anybody get anybody get the reference? I turn it up to eleven. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jeff, I got. They said I got bad feedback. So again, hang on here. I do have pants on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm moving my mic. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, is the feedback better? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you better. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, if, if anything, yeah. I want to make sure that the that the broadcast is good. And as you can see, I was wearing pants. <laughs> That's a plus. <laughs> That's a plus. There, there you go. That's good. Okay, thing. so again, uh, go ahead, Birdman, and continue. I, I, I fixed the I fixed the mic issue. I wanted to make sure. <laughs> go ahead, sir. Can you hear me? Okay, well, as far as us, I've been fans since I was five years old. Well, and um, actually, my parents were Raider fans. And I met, yeah, I converted them to fans. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and um, I am became Birdman about 25 years ago for a Coke commercial. And um, ever since then, the outfit, the paint, and beer really helps bring it out, especially for the games down at the link. All right. Nowadays, I have about five or six people from um, New England states. Hmm? What's that? I was going to say, tell, tell your folks to get a hold of me after the show. We'll talk about good football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Well, actually, they're just as frustrated as I am this year. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. And again, uh, I we appreciate you both being yeah. here. And uh, Becky Gutzler, who's one of my fellow uh, pirates, th thinks that your young lady is adorable. And I want to make sure that you knew that. Oh, thank you. Yes, you, I'd say, tell you what, that's a link many times in the future. Oh, All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll look forward, we'll forward to that. <laughs> And I, I deliberately, I deliberately kept him on last because I knew that if I if I had him on first, that he would try to run this show. Because apparently, Linda McGrath is saying, you know, who the hell's running this show? And uh, so, and, and you, you need to tell Linda McGrath it's myself and Fred. I, I did. Okay. Okay. I already, I already texted her about it, so so that she knows. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. And without further ado, I got my buddy, the Philly sports guy, who I, who I is a kindred spirit, a, a young, my younger brother. Go, go, tell me all about yourself, there, shipmate, and tell everybody that doesn't know you, if there's anybody that don't know you, about you and what, what, how, how did you become the Philly sports guy? Uh, well, I, I feel like that I was born into it. Uh, I, I initially, my mother, my grandmother, my aunt, my uncle all worked down at the spectrum. So I grew up with the flyers originally, and I know that you're a big flyers fan, Jack. So, uh, it's, I, and I'm sorry, the Buffalo <laughs> Sabres, really st yeah, the Sabres stink, but that's okay. Um, yeah. And well, we know Washington did win a, win a Stanley cup recently, so they're okay. But now, now I'm done talking about all that. Uh, so, but it's like, so I, as I grew up, as I grew up at the spectrum, I grew up with all the flyers. So it was like the, it, back then hockey was a, a much different game. Uh, and so we would have the players come over to our house because that we knew them that well. And then as I got older, I started to work at the spectrum and the ovations club is where I was working. And we would get tickets for all the flyers games, the Sixers games. And then we would open up for brunch for the Eagles games. And there would be a whole bunch of rich people that would come in, to the, come in for lunch. It would be too cold and they wouldn't want to go over to the stadium. They'd give me the tickets. So I was going to all of these Eagles games for nothing as like a 14 year old kid, you know, and, and I just, I, I got to be there for a lot of unique moments. And as I grew up, like, so even at 14 years old, I was asking my mother, it was like, hey, why isn't there somebody who gets painted up for all the sports teams? Why is it like I see every once in a while, like somebody can paint it up for the Eagles, but not anything else. And 
I uh, so I just kind of became that guy. I started doing it in 1998, where it was the first time I started getting painted up. Uh, I ran into Birdman for the first time ever down in Tampa Bay when we watched uh, Bryant kick a 63-yard field goal to win that game. Uh, that that game it still sucks. I still think about that. It was so hot that day. Um, and, and then I, I, and then I've just continued. And, and the, the look has evolved. I, I've gone different types of paint jobs and stuff like that. Uh, but now I've just got I've got down to one thing. The Mohawk came at, on my 40th birthday. And that's that's been a staple. And I, he gets to call me shipmate because we are kindred Navy uh, I'm a Navy veteran, so I, I did spend my time uh, during Desert Storm on the USS Portland. So I'd give a shout out to that uh, to the old Sweet Pea, who's now in the bottom of the Atlantic somewhere, um, because they used it for target practice. There you uh, go. So, uh, and, but and uh, I'll be honest, like that, uh, uh, the kindred spirit. You know, not that I don't have Jeff here and Birdman and Eagle Demon, but you know. Jamie and I, man, I said that that's that's my you know, that's the guy you put underneath you give noogies to. So again, but <laughs> that, that's it. And again, I appreciate the, all you guys being here. And uh, I was gonna say, let's see what the, the, the Bills guys should be smiling more than anyone else. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta you gotta see the playoffs. Oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're right, Linda. You're right. <laughs> my goodness. Okay, that's why we're already waiting on flyer season because at least we got a, a team to talk about. You know, hockey's coming up. You know, I can't wait. From but, day. Before we, but before we get there, we got the playoffs. And to get into the playoffs, it's going to be very important for the Washington football team to win this weekend. If the Washington football team wins this weekend, they're going to get in the playoffs. Now – because no, not only that, they'll clinch the NFC East division. Yeah, they'll, they'll clinch and they'll get in. Yeah, the division. Okay. Right. But they'll be in because there is no other team. I mean, uh, I, and because because Washington is the visitors, they will. I am going to give the coin toss to my boy, Pork, Pork Ryan, and we already showed you. If I got to do it again because nobody believes me. It's not a two-sided coin, Okay. There, there's two sides to this. There's heads and tails. Pork run, call it in the air because you are you are making the choice, sir. Tails. Tails never fails. Now he's, right. gotta find it. now he's gotta find it. <laughs> it is heads. Oh, he's okay. he's over. So he's Philly, point. Philly, do you wanna go? The Philly fans, do you wanna go first? Or do you want to defer as to why the Eagles are going to beat the Redskins on Sunday night? And by the way, who's going to talk to both with you guys? Who's going to talk first? I think age should do it. The Birdman calls it. Okay, Birdman. Yeah. Do I think he's going to win? No, no, no. Why? Why are the Eagles going to win on Sunday? Oh, why? Okay, sorry. Okay. You go win because, quite honestly, I think we're going to be a fired up team. I mean, Jim Schwartz is going to retire at the, after this uh, last game. I think that we're going to come out fired up. I think we're going to be ready. We better be ready. Okay. Demon, I'm throwing it to you, sir. Why? Are the Eagles, and again, I say that the correct way. Why are the Eagles going to win on Sunday night and take make sure that the Washington football team does not get the berth as the as the only person in the playoffs from the NFC least? And that is correct, NFC least. Well, I've, I, I've done a lot of research. Um, I've talked to a lot of experts, and I've consulted with many people, and we've come to the decision, why not? Um, it's been that kind of season that, you know, we're at the end of it now. And, you know, 75% of this fan base, I would honestly say, if they had to answer just to uh, 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 an anonymous post, they don't have to give their name. They would want to lose this game. And when 75% of the public is on something, it usually rides the other way. 
So the Eagles will sit everybody. You will see a lot of practice squad people in play. And those guys are going to be hungry. And those guys are playing for a job next year. And those guys will have heart. And those guys are going to win the game. I think it's, I I actually think that this game is going to be based on what the Eagles defense can do because the fact is is that Schwartz has gone on record is that he's saying he's taking the year off. So I think this defense is going to come out and they're going to want to make a statement because Schwartz is that kind of guy. I mean, we had him in Buffalo. The the players loved him. He's that type of coach. So I think I think they're going to they're going to send him out, maybe carry him off the field like he did for us when he <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's a big factor in it, too. Um, I think, I mean, Jim Schwartz oh, is kind of a week-to-week guy here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people want him to blitz more. A lot of people think he's he, he runs a basic defense. Um, and then a lot of people know that he hasn't had the personnel that he, he's wanted. Um, but I think the players, like you said, I don't think there's a player that doesn't want to play for him. I mean, you look at his – uh, his days back to Buffalo and Detroit. I mean, all his players say that he's a player's coach. He 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 sticks his neck out for uh, his players. Um, if he doesn't agree with his other coaches, he does it in a respectful manner. Um, but he he he's a player's coach, and I think they will play for him, um, no matter who, 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 who play who plays starter or backup. I think they're gonna uh, give it all for him. Yeah, I think the. the I think the thing with Jim Schwartz is the fact that the system that he runs, the wide nine, that it is it is player friendly. And, yeah. and a lot of players that have been in his defensive scheme actually have had a great career. I mean, they, their careers actually go up because they're playing in his system. And everybody likes to play in that wide nine system for some reason. Yeah. Okay, but again, the all-knowing. We can't hear you, Captain Jack. We can't hear you. Why are the Eagles going to win on Sunday night? Well, if they are going to win, and I tell you, I, 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 I really am paying close attention to the one o'clock game because if if the Giants don't pull that one off, I I really care a lot less about the the win is winning the third pick in the draft. However, if they were going to win this game. It's going to be because my man, and I've been, I've been touting this guy all season long and have been unhappy about the fact that he hasn't been out there, Quez Watkins is going to go hog wild on the football team. That's what he's going to do. Uh, because I tell you, he's the fastest guy on the field, and it has been, it has been ridiculous that they haven't used him more. It seems like every time he's gotten, he's like I was watching him even against the Dallas against Dallas. He was blowing past Diggs, just blowing past him, play after play after play, and they never threw him the ball. So if we were going to win this game, it's going to be my man Quez Watkins is going to win is going to score a couple of touchdowns and like go for like 170, 180 yards. Other than that, I mean, I feel like half of our team's out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's going to be really hard for us to kind of combat that. He's been out. <laughs> yeah. Volume, volume. I have three people, obviously Eagles fans, that are saying that you know, hey, this this is definitely our our game to win. But I got a guy who's dressed in. Gold and what 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 kind what color red is that there? Burgundy. Burgundy and gold. Burgundy there you go. <laughs> Burgundy and gold that has been sitting kindly listening to Philly fans do this. And they do a lot of that. I know because I'm from Philly as a kid. Okay. You know, you know, you know who gave him his name. You know who came up with his name. <laughs> Poor cry. First off, you want to answer that question direct, or you want to answer why the Washington football team is going to win on Sunday? Your choice. No, I, I give Jamie and Anthony Brooks, who is a uh, Cincinnati Bengals super fan. They 
they've created the name pork rind and I've run with it. So I, I definitely appreciate that, Jamie. But um, as far as the the game tomorrow night, I already have the NFC East championship shirts and hat in my shopping cart. So I'm pretty confident about the game tomorrow with Alex Smith starting. I just – there's no way that we can lose. There, we, this is our third opportunity to lock up the East, and it's going to happen tomorrow night. Okay. By the way, I want, I want to give a good shout-out to Oscar Toledo, the maker of Boca Dios. Thank you there. Uh, yeah, Oscar, it is getting long. I got an appointment with my stylist, and I do say that correctly because I don't go to a barber. I go to a stylist. <laughs> I, I got an appointment nice. with my stylist uh, at the week next week, so I'll be taking care of that. This is going to be going down a little bit too, so I'll be looking a little bit. I'll be bringing sexy back for sure. Okay. So anyway, I appreciate that. And again, I, I, I kind of now you uh, you were on the ESF site. And that was what you said. Hey, what should my name be if I'm not mistaken? Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was talking about, you know, nicknames, this and that. You don't give yourself a nickname. So I put it out there for some of the best fans to uh, come up with something because they're obviously very creative. And Jamie and Anthony knocked it out of the park. There you go. There you go. Okay. Now there is a question. About now, if Alex Smith uh, isn't playing, and you do, and you don't have another gentleman who shall remain nameless, who is a cancer on your team, and I, I have to say that is no longer there. What what is your backup plan other than Alex Smith? Tyler Heineke, and from what he showed me, and in in, I think he had Tyler Heineke. He's from ODU. He played it. He played with uh, Carolina under Ron Rivera too. Okay. Um, I, I'm gonna try technically, to... technically, though, uh, Alex Smith has not been scratched from this game as starting yet. He went through practices and he had no issues with that fight whatsoever. Practice. So there's a chance that Alex Smith still could play in this game. Okay. From, from what from, from what I read today, he is starting. Yeah, that, that's a definite. But I, I don't even think that it's Alex Smith that anybody has to worry about. I think it's Chase Young, yeah. is who everybody's got to count and make sure they know where this kid is at all times on the field this, this Sunday because he is a monster on defense, and he is one of the reasons why that defense is having the success that they've had all year. That guy has a high motor. And Absolutely. Uh, if Jalen Hurst is start and roll tide, I hope he knows where that guy is at all times. Okay. And they well, say defense wins game, then this NFC East division has been tough all year on getting wins. But if defense wins games, you got to look at that Redskins defense. You know, they could be the reason they, they win that uh, the NFC East division. Yeah, they, no, they they'll definitely be the reason why we win because our offense is going to be up points. Well, you can okay, though. I, you can. Uh, you you do have some injuries. Uh, McLearn, uh, the wide receiver there. He he. He's looks, questionable. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, I mean, if you can get your running game going, and, again, it's going to come to what the Eagles bring on defense as well, if right. they're going to be able to stop the running game. I mean, from from what I saw, the where I saw our season just uh, kind of disappear was as soon as Fletcher Cox went out. Um, when he yeah. went out in that game, uh, they the, the running game opened up, and he's not playing – um, tomorrow night. So, you know, that scares me that their running game could get going and, and, you know, could pretty much establish the whole game without big 91 in there. Uh, that's probably my main concern. But aside from that, you know, like I said, you know, when you have a bunch of nobody's playing for a job, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, you guys do have a couple of people returning, right? Jackson's back. For the yeah, there, there's, Ow. There's he's a couple. Out too? He, he's out, but there's a couple people that they say were open for practice and that they're hopeful of, but I don't think that they're going to risk it. Now, the last time the Red, Redskins in Philly met was what September 13th, and uh, yeah. the Skins got them what 27 17. What, what happened? Uh, yeah, no, the last time that the Skins played the Eagles was in 2019. Yeah. yeah. What? Because now it's the it's the football the team now. Redskins, the, the Washington <laughs> football team. 
See, I can't say that. I mean, my uh, mother's yeah. been a Redskins fan since the longest I can remember, and the same with my brother. So I, I know I, I followed the Redskins. I, I mean, my best friend was a Redskins fan, so yeah. I remember when they won their Super Bowls and stuff as a kid. So, but it it, it really it's going to come down to who wants it bad because you got a couple teams that are going to play each other banged up. I mean, I think the whole NFC East has been banged up pretty much all year. Some injuries uh, all the way across the board, including Dak Prescott when he went down. So everyone's had some adversity. And it's kind of odd to see the NFC East struggle like they did this year because they've always been known to be one of those tough, hard football divisions for years. Right. And that's that's why it's it's when you when you look at the uh I guess it's the AFC uh North. I guess yeah. that's the one that's I mean they I think between all four teams, I think we won maybe two games. Against yeah, right. them, which is the reason why that a, a eleven and five team may not make the playoffs. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's five teams right now that are ten and five, and someone's going to be out. Yeah. Okay. And and I got I got a question for everybody. And again, this this is this is something. By the way, I hope you can hear me better. We can. Uh, Welcome back. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying not to have feedback other than me being a loudmouth sob like I normally am. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, what are, are your views about having a team that is not even 500 in the playoffs representing a division? And I firmly believe, and it's not because I don't like anybody in here, but I firmly believe that in order for you to be a playoff participant, you have to be at least 500, and they should give that spot away to somebody that is more deserving of it. Then you're going to have to change the whole playoffs, yeah. how you got it set up, and it's really going to be hard. I mean, everybody knows that if you want to be definitely make the playoff, you go out and win the division. You beat your people, you beat your opponents in your division. That's one way of getting in there. So technically, it doesn't matter what your record is. If you beat your opponents in the in your division, you have a better record. You deserve to be in the playoffs. Right, agree. and he's just upset. He's just upset because he's not in the playoffs this year. Because the Raiders, Raiders just have a better record, but still stink just as bad as the Eagles do. So I don't want to hear. It. I would have, I would have rather beaten Dallas last week and have gotten into the playoffs and had this game be a playoff game to yeah. you know win or go home. Uh, so the fact that we didn't pull it off last week kind of kind of puts this game as more of a you know not so exciting but I am I don't care because a division's a division. So the fact that it could have been that we could have been 6 9 and 1 and and got into the and got into the playoffs means nothing because we would still win a game in the playoffs. And I'm a firm believer that because I believe that whoever came out of the NFC East is going to win a playoff game. And here's so, the thing you got to look at. One, it's a rivalry. Two, it's a division. And and three, Eagles can play spoiler. So this is a big game. This is probably going to be one of a, one of the physical games this weekend because I don't think you're going to get much out of the Giants. But I think the Eagles and Washington game is going to be very physical. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I, I got now. I heard from uh, I heard from the, the Philly sports guy. I want to go back on that. Okay, let's say let's say that Washington wins the division, or another team wins the division. As a representative of the NFC East, and yes, there is an L there in front of East. Are you being the same that you are on record? Because I know Philly sports guy is that you are on record saying that your team is going to be able to win another game in the playoffs. I mean, they're going to be playing the the Buccaneers, and Buccaneers are beatable. Mm -hmm. And if you put pressure on Tom Brady, I mean, and with our defense, we can do that. So yeah. I can I can easily see us getting past you know. Uh, wild card weekend. Okay, now I, I agree with that. In fact, if you pressure that person who shall remain nameless, because I don't say his name, I despise him that much. Okay, and he. But I right. think I, I, quote me if I'm wrong though. But if, if uh, whoever wins the NFC East, wouldn't they automatically be the fourth seed? I, I mean, yeah, they're yeah, fourth yeah, seed. So, so I mean, you're, you're probably going to play someone that's 
barely make it. You could actually probably play the Bears if they win. No, Tampa. No, Tampa's going to have the fifth seed. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Yeah. So the first seed's on by. Then you got second and seven, three and six, four and five. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, first off, uh, I, I definitely want to see that because I live down here in Tampa, and there's nothing more than I want to see than a uh, a win in the first round for whoever gets there. Now, everybody says your team's going to win, but uh, get, I'm going to give you one last opportunity. Close game, uh, more than five points, or is it going to be a runaway between your team winning? And I'm going to start with you there, Mr. Philly Sports Guy. Philly wins by, uh, I mean, and again, not that I'm a, I don't, I really, I don't bet, but is it a close game or is it going to be like a touchdown or more? I'm going to put it at a close game. I'm going to put it at a low scoring game. I, I feel like that I would take, I would take, I don't know. I don't even know what the spread is this week, but I would definitely take the under. The okay. under is what I would go with. And I think that, I, I think that if the Eagles hold the football team under 17 points, they'll win. Okay. 17 points seems to be the number that the Eagles score every week. Okay, Park Ryan, close game, more than a touchdown. What's your what the, the Washington wins but by by how much? I say we win by three. I think we're gonna kick a, a field goal uh, with time expiring and to to win the game. Okay, Birdman, I'm gonna give you two choices: yours and the young ladies next to you. Close game, or is it gonna be a laugher? No, I think it's gonna be a close game. I think we're going to win by 10, though. I think we're going to come out, like I said, we're going to fire it up for Schwartz. I think we're ready. Okay, so, well, me, no matter point. what, as long as Dallas doesn't get in the playoffs, it's a win for me. Right about that. I think it's a win for all of us. <laughs> I'll just yeah. say, I, th I think we are yeah. all in agreement on that. <laughs> yeah. Across the board, we are all in agreement on that. There you go. Uh, Eagle Demon, two yeah. things. First off, you got to get with Jason Dean Hunter because he's really your <laughs> demon, and you guys got to get together. Like uh, Philly sports guys going to come out and see me in Vegas. You make sure you get with uh, Raider Demon King, which is Jason Dean Hunter. You guys together, will, will, I mean, it's it's great having you both uh, the knock out, the balance against each other. Eagle Demon King. Eagles win by how much? Um, I agree with Jamie. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I think it's going to be close. And I actually think this is going to be a rare NFL football game where the defenses have more touchdowns than the offenses. Ooh. I think each team has a defensive touchdown, and I think only one team scores an offensive touchdown. That's, um, that's and and if it comes down to that final field goal, I think we're going to block that final field goal <laughs> and win in overtime. Okay, I, I definitely, I definitely think this is going to be a close game. I mean, if you look at the Philadelphia Eagles; they're 25th in points, and the Redskins are 26 in points. So it, it's going to be a close game. I actually can see this game coming down to a missed field goal. Be honest with you. Don't nope. say that. I don't want to hear that. That, okay. that doesn't favor us. Jeff, Jeff already said his team's out there for the final uh, field goal. So yeah. if, if it would be missed, you know, he already called it. Okay. Well, <laughs> and, and again, I appreciate the candor. Gentlemen, before we go, before we go, I want – you, to, I mean, if there is any causes, any charities, any things you guys are working on that are special to you, and and, and that that you want to make sure that you give a plug to, I appreciate it. Now, I definitely want to make sure that you are given an opportunity to give your plaudit and anything that you think is worthwhile when you're you're out the door. So I'm uh, since uh, Jeff, aka Corkwright, was kind enough to deal with all three of you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him go first tonight, okay? Uh, pork rind again. I appreciate you being here as well. Anything and again with the with the uh, with the hog farmer, anything of consequence that you want to make sure that you give information for the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, first off, appreciate you guys for ha having me on. Um, so 
if you want to get on our website, it's hogfarmerscharity.org. And we actually just teamed up with Amazon to where uh, if you, it's Amazon Smile. So if you go on there, um, you click on the link, you'll set it up. And Amazon actually donates 0.05% of your purchase towards our charity. So, um, you know, by you spending money is helping us out. So we definitely appreciate everybody if you know get on there and sign up. Once again, you know, you can get on our website, hogfarmerscharity.org. Um, so far this year, we were able to raise just right around thirty thousand dollars. So we're actually trying to uh, get around eighty next year. So okay, okay. okay. And and, be, and because I, I know I got I gotta I gotta end with that guy in the right corner. Um, Mr. Uh, Eagle Demon, anything that you would like to put forward as well? Uh, now's your time there, sir. Uh, I, I just like he said, I want to thank everyone for having me on here. This was really fun. Um, I am uh registered and doing a 5k for Eagles Autism. The Philadelphia Eagles uh do great things with uh, uh the Eagles Autism Foundation, they've raised almost 10 million dollars so far. I'm a big advocate of it. Um, it's a near and dear cause to me. Um, so I'll have more links up on, in the future and on my Instagram, and, and I'll post them in the Elite Super Fans. Um, but it's just a great cause where a lot of people raise some money, a lot of Eagles fans get together um, and raise awareness. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Birdman, your, 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 final, your final words for you and that wonderful young lady of yours. No, well, we want to thank you very much for having us on. Um, we're, Eagle uh, we're, uh, we're rooting for us tomorrow and for the years to come. We got back to the Super Bowl. That felt so good. That taste was awesome. We want to experience it again. So, I okay. want to thank you very much for having us on. What do okay. you got? Well, appreciate that. And again, you, you are welcome. She's learning. And little, little chicky, we appreciate you being on here as well, honey. And I, 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 we appreciate both of you because that's a, a nice two-headed monster for sure in that house. And then I, I got, I got to end with uh, Mr. M Mr. Uh, Pags. Go, go ahead, go ahead and say it there, shipmate. What do you got? So I. I took on a New Year's resolution this year that I wanted to raise $25,000 for different charities uh, this year. That's That was my New Year's resolution. I'm not a quitter, so I don't quit anything. Uh, I feel like I have to take on some extra responsibility. Uh, so the Philly sports guy, and, and I'm going to be working with uh, – there's five professional sports teams in Philadelphia. I'm going to be working with all five of the teams. And my goal is to raise $25,000, uh, maybe 5,000 for each or more if I, if I, if I go over that number. But that was one of the things that I did. I actually called out the Eagle demon a little earlier. I'm like, should I have my, you know, his team versus my team to see who could raise some more money for, for Eagles, uh, autism. Uh, since we're both going to be uh, doing that same charity. Uh, but I'm also going to be working with the Flyers charities, uh, the Sixers charities, uh, the uh, uh, Pandemic crew who raised a lot of money this year for Philadelphia, for Phillies charities, and also the Philadelphia Union. So um, I'm going to be uh, – sports don't sleep in Philadelphia, and neither does this guy. Outstanding. Well, again, uh, young lady – and gentlemen, personally, from Elite Super Fans, for for uh, I getting an opportunity with Fred to yeah. give you guys a voice, we appreciate you being on here, and uh, I thank you uh, specifically for enduring. I, I got I got I got to give Jeff a lot of credit because again, three on one, and, and he handled it like a champ. So you know. That that's that, that's great. And I do want to say for everybody, we did have other guests that were lined up, but unfortunately, things happen because we, we do like to make it a fair, quote unquote a fair fight. But again, I love and Linda said it uh, as, as best as I can say it. It's been a fun show with everybody here, and I personally thank everybody for being here. We appreciate you 
Make sure you get don't now don't go on the show and go away. We want to make sure that you guys push the show for everybody. So every week you guys have more people come view us because we enjoy talking football with everybody. So this isn't a one and done. So and I will I will see this as well. Obviously, when we get to the playoffs, we're gonna have the playoff teams there. So be ready. Yeah, and I just want to thank all you guys for coming as well. Appreciate it. You guys, uh, you know, doing what you guys are doing out there. Uh, and I just want to say, well, you know, wish both your teams good luck. I know there's only one winner. Uh, I just hope that everybody comes out healthy. And uh, like I, like uh, Captain had just said, uh, we're going to keep doing this. And I would love to have you guys on again, maybe if it's not this year, maybe next year when we start all over again. But thanks for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Okay. And again, uh, uh, Jamie, they're they're wondering about the, the your charity cause. Uh, make sure that you IM me that, and I will put it in the comments so people will be able to uh, to, to get get into that. Any again, if there's anything you guys want, you know, for the autism and for the hog farmers, make sure you guys IM me, and I will put it on there in the comments for this show so people can go and be able to do that with you. And again, I thank you for putting up with this old bastard for X amount of time because you guys can get a medal for that. <laughs> well, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys having me on the show. And I, you know, I probably speak for everybody that they, you know, this was a fantastic show and, and you, and you, you hold it together really good there, Jack. I, I, I'm impressed <laughs> for, as, for, for as old as you are. I'm surprised that technology hasn't passed you by. <laughs> I, and, and I was working behind the scenes to try to get rid of the feedback and the other thing. I did my best, but, you know. I, I can at least spell. I can at least spell it. Hey, I was just impressed that you had pants on. <laughs> yeah. I think we I, all were. I, 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 we all were, for sure. And but again, I, I wasn't going to make that mistake twice. <laughs> that must have been the church Zoom meeting. <laughs> well, actually, I, I got stories, but you guys will have to. You guys will have to be in the show later. I will talk about the, uh, and it wasn't me, but it was a very good Zoom funny thing that I can get definitely. I will share with everybody. But again, thanks for everybody being here, and uh, we will we will uh, bid you guys adieu. Again, make sure you push this out to everybody. I want to make sure we get more sports fans in here. It's playoffs next week, and we are rolling through the playoffs, making sure we got. He said, she said, uh, team versus team. We are going to stop until we get to the Super Bowl, and I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Thanks again, guys. You're excused. <laughs> Thank you. Go birds. Go, Go birds. birds. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, folks. I'm going to kick you out, Jamie. <laughs> no, I don't have to. All right. <laughs> Jeff, thanks again as well. Okay. Yeah, great, great. That was a great show. That's awesome. Great guys. I, I, like, that. I like that. Hey, and yeah. they, they give me props for they give me props for for knowing how to spell it and stuff. And and with the pants, I I, you know, I, I I think it's I think it's better when we have a Sunday night where you have a rivalry. You know what I mean? Than uh, division foes. I I just think it's better that to put to put them together like that than have an out of conference game. You know. Especially, oh, yeah. I mean, you think about you think about Eagles and Redskins. I mean, how many times they played each other and what kind of games they have. I mean, I, I think the NFC East alone. I mean, like I said, I remember how tough that division used to be, and now now they got the got a lot of rebuilding going on down there. Yeah, and I tell you that the uh, the uh, the NFC, and I will say East. I will yeah. be kind. The NFC East, uh, even when I was a kid in Philly, you know, you had. You know the the great matchups between like and, and uh, Jamie was wearing his Carmichael jersey. You know Harold Carmichael, mm -hmm. and you know he didn't have a he didn't have a quarterback for years and years until he got Jaws. You know he had people like Pete Liskey and Mike Barilla. I mean, again, I was a kid there, and I, I see Jamie at, by, backstage. He's like, "Oh wow, don't you're reminding me about you know Pete Liskey and Mike Barilla." Okay. And they had some good quarterbacks, though. They had Randall Cunningham. Who didn't like Randall Cunningham? 
Guy was awesome. And then you had Donovan McNabb. I'm a Car the Syracuse boy, so I mean, I followed I followed Donovan when he was with the Eagles. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but you know, and and it's still funny to this day when you see the footage from the NFL draft when the Eagles drafted Donovan McNabb, and everybody was in an uproar. Boom! I, mean, I don't. I don't get. He was the best option quarterback in the college. Yeah, I, I tell you. But again, I, I know, I know, I know, Jay, I know, Jamie. Uh, we'll, we'll have him on another time. You know, just uh, you can. In fact, Jamie, you can come on my show anytime. You can come on my show anytime and talk, brother, because I know that it would be fantastic. But again, I want to thank all the guys that we had on. It, it was great, and and you had you had the NFL stuff that we had, and and but you know, there's other there's other uh, there's other football to talk about, and I. I'm not even looking at what you got for me there, Fred. We're going to roll with the schedule, and I will go off the seat of my pants, and I am wearing pants, and I will tell you what I feel about the upcoming game. So go ahead there, shipmate. You go You go first. Who, who we got? First game that we got is the Cowboys at the Giants. Uh, Dallas has won seven straight games against the Giants. So, and, you know, the Giants, uh, they, they got some problems over there offensively, losing their Mar Mar Barkley at the beginning with ACL. And you got Dallas actually playing to get into the playoffs. So, I mean, I hate to say it, um, but I, I think the Cowboys are going to win this one. Yeah, I mean, uh, not the, that, I think we were all in agreement on the panel. Um, and I always say hate the team, don't hate the fans, unless the fans really make you hate them. And uh, right. we, we, we like that in at least super fans. You know, we don't like the teams that we represent at times when we try to get along as fan bases. But we're all in agreement. Most of America, unless you're in Dallas or you just were, were hoodwinked in the 70s to think that they were America's team, you know, really don't like the Cowboys. And I don't know how they're America's team. <laughs> but you know what? I, I think that the way the uh, – yeah, and, and I am live. This is a live show, okay? Um, I, I'm reading the comments. I, I really think that the way the Cowboys have been playing the last couple games, they've actually gotten their stuff together, and they need something to be a springboard for next year, Okay. You're yeah. going to have a lot of questions in the offseason as to how much they're going to they're going to be paying uh, Dak Prescott. That's if they pay him. Whether, whether they want to pay him. If and, he's healthy enough to come back because you look at Alex Smith. I mean, he had the same sort of injury. Well, you know, not as severe, but – and uh, he had several operations. He didn't even know if he was going to play. It took him two years to get back. Right. So there's going to be a lot of questions there now. I, I think, though – that uh, and and surprisingly, Andy Dalton has played well. But I think that they go in another direction next year anyway. Whether it's it's, it's they go to Dak or they they go find somebody. Um, I know I can give them four reasons. Uh, you get it? Four reasons that they that they should get a quarterback from Vegas. Four reasons. Yeah. But uh, there you go. Yeah. But I, I I agree with you. I think that the, I think that the Cowboys win this game, and you know because again they have a, they they have an opportunity to make a statement, and it, if they win, and Washington doesn't, then they're in the playoffs. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's real, and you know this is what the NFL wanted when they changed this format to having uh, division games. They wanted to have more meaningful games at the end of the season. And I mean, if you look across this NFL uh, and these this this schedule for this weekend. There's a lot of meaningful games. There's a lot of teams that are playing for a playoff spot. I mean, the AFC South hasn't even been locked up yet. So that's a whole division, too, that is still up for grabs. And we're in week 17 to try to lock that up. So it's going to be great football all the way across the board, no matter how you look at it this weekend in the NFL. Okay, well, I, I, I agree. I agree. Ne next game there, Fred. Next game, we got the Dolphins at the Bills. All right. And right now the Bills are 6-1 against Miami in the Sean McDermott era since 2017. But it, it's not only that. For me, it's I want to see the Bills get the 13-3, and three, and I want to see them get 6-0 and oh in our division, which has never happened. So I'm hoping that the Bills come out, take care of business, and kick Miami out of the playoffs. But it's all up to the NFL gods, football gods. Yeah, I think I think you got a good get this weekend, uh, especially with that that the gentleman that, that whose whose only occupation in Miami is to get comeback wins. But he is 
as as we started the show earlier saying that he's on COVID protocol. And I yeah. think that's going to be the main reason <clears throat> why uh, the Bills sweep the division this this uh, this year, and they will go six and zero. I, I can't see Miami coming in with Tua into Buffalo into the weather and 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 beating the Bills. I, I just don't see it. That's I, I can't either. I'm taking the Bills as well. Well, we might as well stay right in the uh, AFC East. There we got the Jets at the Patriots. Now. The Jets have not won a road game in New England since Week Eleven in two thousand and eight. You think the think the Jets could go uh, get three in a row? Because you, you look at this New England Patriots team; they they're just I don't know what to make of them. They can't throw the ball. Their defense was it was was a mess uh, last week, uh, and and the offense. I, I mean, I don't know what's going on with their running backs. They don't look as strong. Now you got a hungry Jets team coming in there looking for win number three on the season. I, I could almost see an upset here, and and well, not really an upset, but I'm saying I could see the Jets winning this one. I actually can too. And if and I remember, the Jets are Jets are on what I think would be a three game win streak. It really should be a four game win streak, and I will I will say that because the Jets beat the Raiders. For fifty-eight and fifty-eight minutes, 15, yeah, 59 15, minutes, and fifty-eight 30, minutes and thirty seconds. seconds. I, yeah. I I like the Jets going into New England and just uh, pissing on Bill Belichick's Wheaties. I can see that definitely, definitely. Now we got another big game here. Uh, turning it over to the AFC North, you got the Pittsburgh Steelers and taking on the Browns, and both these teams are dealing with COVID issues right now, and. If for some reason, if the Browns win this, they'll clinch their first playoff berth since 2002 with a win. But as we already know, it's already been reported, uh, the um, Pittsburgh Steelers are going to arrest Ben Roethlisberger. And I think that's kind of a smart move only because of his age. And I, I've seen how he his his play from, from week one has gone down. I, I think the guy really needs this break. And I, I don't know if – if they're going to have enough firepower, uh, because I, I don't know if Connor's playing either. I think he's up in the air as well. With Mason Rudolph under center, I think this Cleveland Brown team is, is going to be hungry. Uh, they got Landry's back this week, so they got some weapons on the offensive side of the ball. and I, Plus the fact is they're, they're playing at home. So I'm going to go with the Browns, and I think they're going to get their first playoff berth since 2002 this weekend against the Steelers. Yeah, I, I agree there uh, being a, that, you know, if the, the Browns have something to play for. And right. and I really think that that when, when all intents and purposes, when you have Roethlisberger resting and the Steelers knowing that basically they – now the Steelers can drop from the two seed to the three seed. They're already the three to seed. Uh, what would happen if, if the Bills lost and Steelers lost, Bills would still maintain that two spot because of the head-to-head. Oh, okay. Well, then they, uh, the Steelers really have nothing to play for, and uh, the the Cleveland does. Yeah, I, I see. I see Cleveland all day in this. Although you know, I said Cleveland has had probably the worst COVID uh, of, of any of the NFL teams. It's always Cleveland closing, Cleveland closing, Cleveland closing. They've had to deal with, and I think that they were saying that the, is the Cuyahoga County, I believe, is the what the uh, what the, their practice facilities are that, that they have. I mean, it's like a COVID central up there in Ohio. Yeah. Uh, they closed three out of four days this week alone. They were doing all their meetings and everything on zoom. They had practices canceled and everything. So yeah, you got to hope that these guys get it together to come out and lock up this spot. But you also got to look at the fact that they laid an, laid an egg last week and they shouldn't have, they should have been, you know, that's a game that they should have won. They let it go. They let it slip by. So, but they're also, again, COVID, they had no wide receivers at all. So that's yeah. the NFL getting through the games. So. Wow. Whoop. Hang on a second here. Yeah, they closed three out of four days this week alone. They were doing all our meetings and everything. On hey, that's me. It's canceled. Okay. Uh, again, I, I apologize. I was trying to – I'm trying to get the link up that uh, that I'm getting on Facebook while we are streaming. So apologies there for the, uh, for the extra audio. I'm trying to get the, the – the shoot 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring up uh, with, uh, there we go, Hog Farmers Charity. So again, I still think uh, it, it's going to be, uh, no matter what, I, I think it's going to be the uh, the friggin', um, and of course it's not going to work. I, I, I hit I hit a, I hit the wrong button. One one second. Oh, there it is. Okay, it did work. Good. Um, I I, st I think it's going to be the uh, I think it's going to be the uh, uh, the Cleveland all, no problem. And, and by the way, this next link, and I'm putting it up there. This is for the Hog Farmers Charity, so it is there for everybody to see. It'll it'll be there in the. I mean, it's really long. So, uh, I, I obviously uh, go go to it. That that is per uh, per uh, pork rind, aka Jeff. So there is the Hog Farmers Charity. Um, I, again, it's really long. Uh, or or go to just go to hogfarmerscharity.org and, and and get that get that information straight from there. Great causes uh, that we have there. So there we go. Uh, but yeah, uh, Cleveland easy in this one. Sorry, partner. I I, I was I was listening. Nope, you're trying, good. Yeah, nope, trying to get it done. My computer's slow, and I didn't want to have to uh, stand up and show my short pants again. <laughs> no, you're good. Moving on, Ravens and Bengals. Now, of course, everybody knows the Ravens need this to clinch the playoff berth with a win. So, I mean, can the Bengals play spoiler? Absolutely. They've done it before in the past against the Ravens, no less, when they let the Bills in in 2017. So, with that said, do they have another spoiler in them this year? I don't think so. I think the Ravens are going to roll this team over. They're playing some real good ball right now, especially down the stretch. That offensive is, is motoring. They, they're running the ball well, and uh, Lamar Jackson looks pretty good. So, I'm going to say no on that one, and I think it's going to be the Ravens. And a dominant performance against the Bengals. To get into. Uh, and and I, I've, I've been on record saying this the last couple of weeks, okay? I think that the two best teams right now in the AFC that are playing is Buffalo and Baltimore. Yeah. And it, it wouldn't surprise me to have any one of those uh, teams to be in the AFC championship game and dethrone – Kansas City and Kansas City might not even get there because they just have had an affinity this year to playing down to their opponents and they're not going I mean yeah they got a first round bye but it's eventually going to uh, in my estimation going to kick them in the ass if they don't take care of it. Ravens easy on their game and look for Baltimore or Buffalo to be the AFC champ and that's per Captain Jack. I like that. As long as it's the other Bills team there. <laughs> Moving on, Vikings and Lions. Minnesota's won six straight games against Detroit. And, I i mean, I don't think these teams are playing for anything, but I, I think that um, the Vikings, they, they could be playing for their head coach. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, he, he's got some issues going on that the defense isn't what it was before. Uh, I don't i don't know if Delvin Cook's going to be there. Um, I know that he had a – an emergency as I think a family member passed away. So um, I'm not sure if he's going to be there, but if he is, I'm, I'm going to say that the Vikings roll over Detroit pretty handily. Right. I, I would say Minnesota just, just because, uh, and, and, and you said it right at the top of the key is the, uh, the, the, the Lions already uh, got their coach fired. Okay. Yeah. And Mike Zimmer is actually a, a, a better is a better coach, obviously, and he has gotten a lot with that organization. I really think that it's going to come down to the team winning for Zimmer. And even if they do, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be there. But I right. think Minnesota will will do him right on that, what could be Mike Zimmer's last game. I'll take Minnesota. Perfect. Falcons at the Bucks. Well, Tampa Bay right now, 29.9 points per game is a franchise record this season for them. So they're definitely putting up some points. Then they're playing this Falcons team. Now, this Falcons team has been playing tough as late, but they, they're not finishing games. So I, I think the Buccaneers pretty much have a playoff spot. I don't think that they're going to risk a lot of their starters because I don't think they can go up or go down at this point. So, I mean, I, I think the Bucs are uh, – I, I think they're going to win, but I think Falcons are going to put up a hell of a fight. Yeah, I agree. If the if the uh, if the uh, if the Falcons could actually 
have just not let some games get away from them. I mean, they they were they were beating the Chiefs. Yep. And they let the, the hoe miss a field goal. Yes, pun intended there. Okay, because the guy's <laughs> name is hoe. Okay. Yeah. But uh, if I mean, my God, the, the Falcons could be a much better team this year. I, I really think that uh, that the Bucks will probably win because they're a better team. But it wouldn't put it wouldn't surprise me in one respect to have the Falcons win because uh, Raheem Morris has already been has interviewed for the Falcons job. Right. Okay. And uh, I want to see what the team does if they really want to have him as their coach. He, they might win to get Raheem in that spot. And I, I, it wouldn't surprise me to have the Falcons go in there. In fact, the Falcons were winning seventeen to nothing in Atlanta against the the uh, the Bucks a few weeks ago, and they just let it slip away. Yep. Yep. I think that they are going to come out, and they're going to be a lot tougher. I, I still think that the Bucks will squeak by, but I would I wouldn't be very surprised if Atlanta just takes it to them on so I know that that sounds wishy washy that you know I'm, I'm picking both, but basically it, it, I, it's I, a coin I, flip. It really is a coin flip at this point. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of coin flips, Cardinals and the Rams. I mean, the Rams are seven and zero versus Arizona and Sean McVay's era since 2017. They could possibly be eight and zero because I mean you look at Murray's not a hundred percent. I know he's banged up a little bit, and the same with the Rams now. Um, they're they're done with their quarterback. He had a, a surgery on his thumb, so he's probably not going to play. So I, I don't even I didn't even look and see who's going to be the backup quarterback for this one. So yeah, maybe I'll, this I'll could be the card. Yeah, I mean uh, I I, li- I like Arizona. Because in the one respect, I think that Murray is at least saying, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Yeah. And if you got Murray against uh, Goff's backup, who I think was the kid from Wake Forest. Yeah, I'm not sure. I forgot to look into this one. Yeah, I I, I think that he he played at the American, All-American Football Conference. No, actually, that goes way back to the Browns and the uh, the 49ers, the All-American Football Conference. But the AAF. You know the the recently defunct uh, other league, uh, yeah, yeah, and that's who the quarterback is. I'll, I'll take Arizona. I just think they're a better team. I I think so too. I mean, and uh, I don't know if Hopkins is still binged up a little bit too. So we'll have to see. But I I, I think I would take the cards with golf not being in there with that thumb injury. So yeah, I mean uh, the Rams got a, a a fantastic defense, but they haven't been playing up to it the last. No. Uh, you know, a couple, couple weeks. So I'll, I'll take Arizona. I don't know it where it is. Is it, is it in LA? It's, or? Yeah, it's in LA. I mean, there's no fans. So I'll take, I'll take Arizona. Right. And then you got the Packers at the bears. Green Bay's five and zero all time against Chicago when they're playing in week 17, five and all. Wow. Like well, here's the thing. Bats. Well, here's the thing. Trubisky is playing for his job. They're playing for a playoff spot. The Bears are not eliminated. They got a chance to get in the playoffs. It's going to hinge on Trubisky's shoulders. Trubisky, if he can come out and have a good – the Packers may lay down a little bit. Well, I mean, they're, they're still trying to get that number one seed. They're probably going to be uh, probably score watching to see uh, and then maybe call off the dogs. But Trubisky, that defense, Chicago's got a reason to play week 17. I mean, this is this is going to be a close game. I, I would like to give it to the Bears in an upset over the Packers. You said you would like to. Are you going to? Yeah, I will. I'll go Bears with an upset over the Packers. Trubisky, the Bears know that they got a shot to get in the playoffs. They got to win. Yeah, but you know what? Green Bay is going for that for that number one. Yeah, they're going. I mean, and the the Packers have never, if I if I am uh, if I am correct in this, I don't think that they've ever been the number one seed while Aaron Rodgers has been their quarterback. I think that the the best that that they've had with Rodgers, and again, I might be wrong, but I just seem to recall that Rodgers has never had a number one seed or the opportunity for that first round. But maybe they've had a first round buy before. But nowadays, you only get the one team with the first yeah. round buy. And it's yep. very important for Green Bay to be the number one seed throughout and, you know, making sure that everybody has to go through the 
frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. My inner John Facenda from Philly, by the way. Yeah, and we've seen what happened to the Tennessee Titans being over there in Lambeau Field with a little bit of weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, in Chicago's used to the weather playing yeah. off the lake. But, you know, I, I, I still like the Packers in this one. Perfect. Seahawks and 49ers. Man, this is an interesting one. Seattle has allowed 17 points or fewer in five straight games. So are they going to hold the 49ers? 49ers got more injuries again over there. They got injuries at the quarterback position. So I, I think this is going to be Seattle's tune up for the playoffs. I, I think they're just going to roll right over. I don't think that you're going to stop uh, Russell Wilson. I, I think he's going to have too much for the 49ers defense. I, yeah, I, see the Seahawks. Easy. I mean, I, I can say it. Uh, Seattle has been playing better and better and better each week. Their defense is coming along. And I, I mean, like you, like you even said, you know, the 49ers are in a, are in a, are in a, with a mash unit. Yeah. And you know, we'll, we'll see what the, the 49ers are next year without all the injuries and without all this, that, and the other thing, maybe they get back to the form that made them the NFC champs uh, last year, but this is not last year. Actually, technically it's next year. And not last year because it's still last year because it's the twenty. You know what I'm saying? It's 2020, man. Right, and it's going to be interesting to see what 49ers do at the quarterback position too because I don't think that Garoppolo set at that position for them. No, so. man. I, like I said, if uh, if there's a certain quarterback in Vegas that doesn't go over to uh, the Patriots, I still see them maybe wanting to get Jimmy G back. And like I said, it all comes down to if McDaniel is still the OC. In New England, if McDaniel is the OC, he'll work with Garoppolo. If McDaniel is the OC, he'll work with that kid that's that played for the Raiders his entire life. And but that's the key is getting McDaniel as the OC. Right. Saints at the Panthers. Man, this this is an interesting one because these guys need to win, and they are banged up at the running back. Well, not banged up. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. They have COVID. A lot of running backs on COVID reserve right now. They they're they're missing players because of COVID. They're bringing up people from the practice squad. So if Drew Brees doesn't come out and throw the ball fifty times to get this win, they would probably won't be doing it by running the ball. And you know the Panthers are giving up some points on the ground. So and through the air. So if the Saints should happen to win, it's going to be interesting to see the Green Bay Packers and the Saints who gets that number one. I think it's going to favor. I, I think it favors the Packers. If I'm, they got a game up on them right now. Yeah, and, and and the Packers ended up beating them this year, so they got the head to head. So maybe the Saints can't even catch the number one. No, I, I don't think they can. And uh, but uh, you, like you said, the Saints should win based yeah. upon that they are a better team. I mean, I, I, there. I mean, I, I think I saw somewhere where Taysom Hill is going to be uh, their running back because he knows their plays anyway. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think that that – so he's become a gadget of a gadget. And if they're going to call some kids up from the practice squad, I mean, not having Kamara and uh, Latavius Murray is really going to – Oh, but, yeah, that's, that's definitely – well, then, then they don't have Michael Thomas either. So that's another one that's – that's three weapons right there. This is where the tight ends are going to come into play this week. Okay, and by the way, I, I haven't been putting up the comments that people have been saying because I wanted to make sure that I put that last hog farmer's charity up there for as long as possible. But I'm going to I'm going to do a couple so people can see. I'm not ignoring you. I just w wanted to make sure that that hog farmer charity was up there for as long time. And we appreciate from Matt Shane and his comment. Ed Winchell was calling every game, so thanks for your input there, uh, Ed. Perfect. You know, and I wasn't ignoring yet. I just wanted to make sure that, that was up there for a while. And uh, who's Kamara? Who's, uh, uh, oh, you're trying to say Kamara? Camaro. He's a wide receiver that actually played. Uh, actually, he played for the Kansas. I want to say the Packers. And then he was wow. just up in Buffalo for a little bit. He made his first touchdown as a bill. And then they uh, they actually put him, they waived him because they were going to bring John Brown back. And they actually uh, were going to bring him back, but he got picked up. So that's how the Bills lost him. Okay. And then the Saints picked him up. 
And yeah, Mike Mike Nav was saying it. Yeah, that's who that's who they that's who they got. So there you yeah. go. Um, next game, Jags and the Colts, and the Colts are still looking to get the division. Uh, the funny thing is though, is the Jags are one and zero against the Colts uh, against the rest of the team. They they haven't won, so <laughs> they got them going. They were actually able to beat the Colts earlier this year. So that that was their only win that they got, and now they're going to come back and they got to play each other. But you know what's funny is that no one is mentioning this Colts team. I think all the way around, this is a good football team. They got a good coach. He keeps them in line. They got a great offensive line. They got a running game, and they got a defense. And well, they got Philip Rivers, but that's their only. Ah, downfall. see that? There you go. <laughs> you, you, had, you had me. You had me. Convinced as soon as you said, but but then you lost me with Philip Rivers, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say I agree. did you hear how I said it? I said, well, then they got Philip. I, I I get you. I know that I know it was very snide and uppity. I get it, and that's how I agree. I like the Colts, and they win in spite of Philip Rivers. And as long as Philip Rivers doesn't lose them a game, they will they will be a a, a decent team in the playoffs. You know, I but. It's going to come down to if Phillip doesn't screw up and, and throw a pick six at an inopportune time. And I always used to say this when he played for the Chargers. I said, Phillip Rivers is going to give you a pick six or, yeah. or, or an interception at the most opportune time for your team. And if the Colts can win with, uh, without Phillip Rivers doing something stupid, they'll be a decent team. So, yeah, I'll give it to the Colts as long as Phillip Rivers doesn't ruin it for them. And by the way, Philip, go spend some time with your 50 kids at the end of the season, okay? <laughs> and retire already, okay? I get it. You 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 you're you're a great guy with a bunch of kids and I don't take that away. I say that sarcastically, but I mean, that's great for Philip. I I get it. But go retire. Be with your kids. <laughs> Perfect. But I I got a, I got the Colts. I I'm taking the Colts on that one. <laughs> Next game, Chargers and Chiefs. Kansas City won 12 of the 13 games against the Chargers. Anthony Lynn, I mean, is he going to be there? They got a good quarterback. That's that's an ideal, ideal job for a new coach. I mean, you got a big, young quarterback that can sling the ball. Uh, they, they got some defensive players down there. They got warm weather. So that's an appetite. I mean, that that looks pretty good for a young coach wanting to beat coach uh, coach somewhere. That's yeah. if Anthony Lynn is fired. Maybe they save. Maybe they beat the Chiefs because the Chiefs aren't playing for anything. Uh, maybe the, this is the win that the Chargers need to keep Anthony Lynn, Lynn's job. So I'm I'm going to go with the Chargers. I don't think the Chiefs are playing for anything. They can't advance any further in the playoffs. They got the first seed locked up. No one can catch them. So they'll probably rest a bunch of players. And it'll look like a preseason game, except for the Chargers. Yeah, I, I I like what you're saying there, but and here's the but: the Chargers, the very first game this year, should have beaten the Chiefs mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. I remember that game, and by all two, like, and I was telling you guys before that the Chiefs have been getting by 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 uh, you know by the wits end. A couple different games, the Panthers game, the second Raiders game, the, the Falcons game, the, the Chiefs. Miami are, game. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they, they should. Oh, yeah, but definitely Miami game too. So the Chiefs have been getting by and getting by and getting by. They're yeah. showing kinks in the armor. Yeah, and, and I, I think that the Chargers should give them a game, but. I also think that the Chiefs remember that they need to start tuning up for the playoffs. So I think that they will play enough players. If they can put them away in the first half, then they'll rest them. But I, I think that they it'll be like, like you said, it's going to be like a preseason game. They'll play a couple of their guys, and they're, they're just a better team. But I, I still like Kansas City at home on this one. I, and I, I said the Chargers are up and coming, but I, I still will take Kansas City at home. Yeah, I, I don't even know if Patrick Mahomes is going to start, to be honest with you. There hasn't been anything, anything out there if he is or is not. But even if he is, I guarantee he plays three series and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to see a totally different Chiefs team without with with Patrick Mahomes not in the game. So 
Well, I might, I might actually, uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm broadcasting my game, so it's on at the same time. So never mind. I was gonna say I would, I would watch it, but I'm gonna broadcast my game, the Raider game on <laughs> Apple's ColorCast app. Hint, hint, hint. Everybody wants to listen to a, a great broadcaster. Well, at least not in my mind, but at least somebody that gives a crap about the Raiders. Actually, I'm, I'm a good. I am. I am a good broadcaster. I will say that. All, all kidding aside. So yeah, check me out on the Colorcast app. But since that game's going on at my, at, at my game, I might just keep an eye on it just just for giggles. But uh, there you go. I I I, uh, I think that uh, Kansas City wins because it's in Kansas City. Next game, Titans and Texans. Titans win. They lock up the AFC South. But you got to hold on a second because J.J. Watt has already gone on record saying that they're playing. They are coming to play. So Titans are going to have their hands full because the Texans are out to play. And, I mean, it, it's going to be – I mean, if you you got a, a pissed-off J.J. Watt and he's saying that he's coming to play – I, I don't like your odds. <laughs> to be honest with you, I, do. I know the, tit- the Titans know what's at stake, but you know you got a hungry team that's looking to make a statement and have that last game at the end of the season to help you look forward to the following season. And the Texans team, they could have a new head coach and a couple new pieces on that team. So it's going to be an interesting game. I think it's going to be close, but I think the Titans are going to end up pulling it out. I was gonna say uh, I got the Titans all day in that game. I think it's a bunch of lip. Uh, I think it's a bunch of lip service from JJ Watt, and I, I I mean this sincerely because I think JJ Watt's not going to be there next year. I mean the, the the chances of him staying with that franchise um, are. I mean it's it's kind of like that bravado at the at the end of you see these guys where they're about ready to you know the Christians against the Lions, you know the bravado yep. against the well. You know, let, let's let's go up and we're and I'm Spartacus and all this other mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, but you know you're going to get your ass handed to you. And you know, JJ Watt is doing what a captain should and showing what a captain's place is. But JJ Watt's out of there. He's going to take less money. I I I, I call it now. He's going to take less money to join his brothers in Pittsburgh. So you have the three Watts brothers, uh, not, not the Marks brothers, but the Watts brothers. Actually, if they well, that would be an interesting defense. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that JJ JJ can say all he wants to, but uh, you know I like the Titans in that game. Last but not least, Raiders at the Broncos. Denver has won five straight Week 17 games against the Raiders. No, actually, that's not true. Week true. 17. I know, no, no, that's still not true. The NFL gave them the last Week 17 game against the Raiders last year when the NFL referees didn't give the Raiders at least two touchdowns that they should have had. So it's the Broncos four, NFL one, Raiders zero on that stack. <laughs> I think the Raiders got a lot to prove this game. I, I think you're going to see a different team. I think actually could be playing for Gruden's job because you got to think that he's got to be on the hot seat. I know they gave him what ten years, hundred million dollars, but you know what? That doesn't mean anything if you're not performing in the NFL. That's what the NFL stands for. Not for long if you're not winning. Yeah, yeah so, I saw that episode with Jerry Glanville too. Yeah. yeah. Um, here, here's the here's the thing. Gruden ain't going anywhere, and that really infuriates. A bunch of Raider fans. He's not going anywhere. He's got yeah. a ten-year contract, and you know uh, Mark Davis is still paying Jack Del Rio. Okay, Mark Davis is pay is paying John Gruden as his his ace in a hole coach on a ten-year deal. So that's that's bad business decision. Now, having said that, it doesn't say to what capacity he's going to be working for the Raiders. I still think that Gruden will come in and coach next year. I would rather have a new head coach with a new defensive coordinator, with a new offensive coordinator. Most Raider fans feel the same way. We really do. We love our team. We're not really enamored with John Gruden. If you ask most Raider fans that are honest, that's what they will say. Okay, Two two trades stand out that that I, I, I couldn't believe that Gruden didn't. That's Amari Cooper. And Khalil Mack letting them to go. That, okay. that's, I, 
But why why pay why pay for players that don't want to play for you or the franchise? Yeah, that's true too. <clears throat> they, didn't want, they didn't want to play for Gruden and they didn't want to play for the Raiders anymore. Okay. So in that respect, at the time we it looked like we got really good picks with the, you know, the the Cooper and Mac trades. Yeah, uh, we got and we got some decent picks, but those players are still kind of under the microscope right now. So we'll see. The Raiders have got Raiders are are, are are a team that we really can't. And again, I'm one of the biggest Raider fans going. I would say I'm the second or third biggest Raider fan that I know. OK, because I, I, I will kowtow to Violator. And, and, and Mark Acasio as Gorilla Rilla, as somebody that's well-known. There's nobody, in my estimation, that is more loyal and faithful to Raider Nation than I. And I don't say it egotistically just because I live, breathe, and everything sleep is Raiders. But Raiders got a lot of questions. They, got to, they yeah. need to figure things out. They have the capabilities to beat the Broncos. If they are playing for something, I like our chances. I don't know whether they are playing for something, and that's why I can't figure this game out. I really can't. Yeah, I mean, like I said, they could be they could be playing for Gruden. You don't know, you know. But I, I said the Raiders are probably going to come out and squeak one out. Well, that would make it make an eight and eight year, which which at least would be better. I mean, the Raiders are at worst going to be seven to nine, which is what they were last year. Right. So you didn't improve much. Didn't improve much. Last game we didn't we we talked about it but we didn't pick it Washington at the Eagles. Oh right? yeah, no, we we didn't. We we had fun with everybody, but we didn't. Yeah, pick it. go ahead, Fred. I'm actually going to take the Washington Redskins. I, I think with this win, they're going to come to the NFC East. Yeah, I you, think they're going to win this you game. Money, you owe no money by saying that word. <laughs> No, I, I just I, I got that feeling. I, I just think that that Washington defense is really legit. I think if you get Alex Smith with his veterans presence, I, I think they can move the ball. I think the players are gonna, you know, play around with Alex Smith and, and they're gonna play for him. And, and they're, I mean, it's definitely gonna be a close game. It, it's not gonna be a blowout. And I don't think these guys are gonna score. Both the two teams are not gonna, they're not gonna score twenty points each. I think that's gonna be less than that. But I definitely can see the Skins pulling this out. I'm sorry, the Washington football team. There you go. Because, like I said, it, it, if you were down here, well, I'm old school. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Uh, you know, you, you have to remember because it's like you can't call them the San Diego Chargers. You you can't call them, oh, you know, God, know. Oakland yeah. Raiders. Yeah, you can't call them the Oakland Raiders. You, you got St. You got Louis them. Cardinals, Arizona oh, Cardinals, no. Los Angeles Rams. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. St. Louis Rams, <laughs> you got, you got, you Houston got Oilers, there. Tennessee Titans, the, the 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 Cleveland Browns again, <laughs> again. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Because okay. they went to Baltimore, the Ravens. Yeah, so I <laughs> I know that you got to keep up with this. <laughs> I, I I tell you, I I like I like the Washington defense. I like the story with Ron Rivera. I like what they are doing. I like mm -hmm. the fact that they are fighting for a playoff spot in a division. And, and their defense is wonderful. If they could, if they could rely on Alex Smith, you know, I, I would pick them. You know, uh, and again, uh, and and I like the dissertation that uh, that uh, was the pork rind was talking about. You know, the fact that that defense, I'd love to see them beat the Tampa Bay team. I, I'd love to see that happening because they got the defense to do it. Yeah, and I think that that defense is going to carry them into the playoffs. They're going to beat the Eagles, and you know, so so give it to the Washington football team. And I, I can't wait till we figure out my my money is on the Red Tails as an homage yeah. to the to the Tuskegee Airmen. That's that's what my money is on. But you think about it, that defense is built to actually beat these slow older quarterbacks. And Tom Brady falls right in that category, just like Ben Roethlisberger. They're too young and too fast up on that front, on that defense. That Chase Young is a game changer. Oh, yeah. And it's not just him. It's uh, it's Kerrigan. And Sweat. Oh, yeah, Sweat. That's right. That guy, yeah. They got him there, too. Yeah, they're young. Young, yeah. fast. Yeah, that, that's a nice front seven they got. Yeah. And they're going to be together for years to come. 
Yeah, and it, as long as they can keep the they keep the, the cap squared away with those yeah. guys, they're going to be a good good young team for a while. I I think that's going to be the the class of that division for a while. Yeah, they they got to get a quarterback situation. I mean, because Alex Smith, we know he's not the long term answer there, but uh, they add a couple pieces on the wide receivers and add a quarterback. Uh, they that could be the team. They they could leapfrog the Giants and. And leapfrog the Dallas Cowboys and the Eagles and be the dominant team. And you think about it, they they've been actually hanging right around the cellar for the last couple of years. Now they're starting to come back to the top. So, but I think that's how the NFC East is, though. I think if you look at it, um, it's like every year there's a different team that stands up that's dominant. I mean, think about the Giants runs. Nobody expected them. They're what seven and nine. They jumped through the playoffs in the wild card and. Or nine and seven. Next thing you know, they're winning the Super Bowl by defeating the the Patriots twice. So a- anything could happen any given Sunday. All about but, matchups, I tell you. Yeah. That. So, and before we go, I want to make sure that everybody knows that if you're if you uh, have kept us with us so far, we thank you. We are on uh, usually Friday, and we'll, but we we will move things around as need be. But make sure you you come back and watch this broadcast when we're on. We'll make sure we put the word out to it. I enjoy it, and I want to I want to say I, I appreciate working with Fred. You know, it's easy to work with somebody, and and uh, and and you know he's got it right here, and he's got those notes, and I love that. And and not that I fly by the seat of my pants. I know what the hell I'm talking about too, but. I, I, I like the I like the, the the interpersonals that we have, and I want to say thank you to Fred and thank you for our guests that we had on earlier. You know the Eagles fans, Philly sports guy, uh, Pork Rhyme, uh, Birdman, and uh, Eagle Demon. I believe were, were the gentlemen, all of them uh, that we had on, and a great show with them. And I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, Ed, thanks for being here, and Becky, thanks for being here as well. We appreciate it, and to make sure you comment. And join our shows each week. We appreciate you. Uh, Fred, any last words, brother? Yeah, I, I, I too want to second what you said about having our guest on the show. And if you're a fan of the Eagles or the Washington Redskins, follow these guys. Uh, help out in their charities. They're doing great things out there. Uh, and, again, if you do like the show, you do like what we're doing here, be sure to like it. Be sure to follow Elite Superfans, the page. Be sure to follow them on Instagram. And they have a Facebook group as well. Be sure to follow Captain. You can reach me. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I put out a lot of Bills news. I'm with the Cold Front Report. Uh, we, we put out a lot of the updates, uh, breaking news, anything that comes out of Buffalo. We are the first ones to post it. You can find us on Facebook on a page. You can find us on Instagram, and you can find us on Twitter. Uh, we, we stay busy because the Buffalo Bills keep us busy. Okay, and uh, I got. I will take it out. So in case you're wondering, the, I am Captain Jack. I had to put, put my name back up. <laughs> and that's Fred, Fred Phil Martin. And again, we appreciate you being here. Like uh, Fred said, uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, find me on. Uh, find me on YouTube. It's Captain Jack Rackham Levy. I do lots of sports. Yes, I cater. I, I cater to my Raider Nation brethren and sistren, but I talk sports with everybody. And remember, uh, go to go to uh, Fred uh, for all of those reports as well. I'm on IG. I'm on uh, uh, Twitter. I have an OnlyFans page too. <laughs> He's loaded. I, I yeah, I tweeted that today. I wanted to see how many people were paying attention. I said, yeah, uh, are you following me uh, uh, on my IG and OnlyFans? You know, I said I want to see how many people tweeted out because that, that that that's funny. Well, I'd love to have an OnlyFans page and get paid like all those girls do. But uh, there you go. Again, Fred, it's been it's been enjoyable. Make sure that the folks you are here next week. Uh, we will have our shows for the playoffs. We'll have we'll have the playoff uh, updates for you, and it's always fun. So even though I'm not going to be talking about the Raiders much anymore, unless we have something to talk about, I will be talking football with Fred Kilmartin and everybody else here. And I thank you, Fred, out the door. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, folks. Again, you've been watching the Elite Super Fan Show. That's Fred. I guess uh, that would make me Barney. <laughs> someone's got to be. Yeah, someone's got to be. Thanks again, folks. We'll see you next week. Appreciate you.